Greetings. Thank you for joining us. Today is February 8th, 2022. I'm Steve Shields, president of Royal Asiatic Society Korea. I welcome you to our lecture on behalf of the officers and the council. By way of reminder, lecture content does not necessarily reflect the opinions or positions of Royal Asiatic Society Korea. The Royal Asiatic Society traces its beginnings to India in the late 1700s and was formally chartered in London in 1824 by King George IV. The Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland granted a charter to the Korea branch in 1900, the fourth year of the reign of the Gwangmu Emperor of Korea, more commonly known as King Kojong. His Imperial Majesty was a dear friend of RAS Korea and most of its members in his day. RAS Korea expresses sincere thanks to our generous sponsor, Asia Development Foundation, for their continuing support. We especially thank our members who have paid their annual dues. Your dues provide essential primary funding for RAS Korea. Without your membership, we could not host the lecture series. We would love to have you join us if you're not already a member. It takes only a few minutes uh, to sign up. Membership gives you the opportunity to support the world's first and oldest Korean studies organization. For 122 years, we have strived to explore and promote all facets of Korea's rich heritage. Members receive our annual journal, Transactions. Members are also recognized reciprocally by most all of the other RAS affiliated societies, as well as the London based original RAS. See our website at raskb.com for details. I will provide a link in the chat box in a few minutes. If you are not a member, we would appreciate your one time admission fee. Please refer to the donation page uh, that is on the screen, and I'll also put that information in the chat box later. We're joined tonight by John Thong. John is a is Burmese it, political scientist not. with a uh, PhD uh, uh, and a PhD researcher. Uh, he advocates uh, for democracy and human rights in Burma and has done so for more than 15 years. You can watch a series of current military coup discussions at the Global Digest uh, gbdigest.com. After the lecture, there will be time for questions. Let's now welcome John. Can I share my yes. PowerPoint? Yes, you should be able to do that now, John. So how can I? At, at the, there should be a green button that says share screen. You, your PowerPoint should be up and running first. Then if you click share screen, you have to pick which screen on your computer to share. There we go. We've okay. got share, screen sharing. Okay. Can you can you see? All right now I can I can see the PowerPoint uh, page, but I don't see any slides. There we go. Okay. Uh, if you would go up to the menu at the top that says slideshow. Yes. Click that. Slideshow. slideshow. Uh, there we go. Yep. There we That's go. Right. That's right. That looks good, John. OK. John, welcome. And the floor is yours. The rest of us will put our mics on mute so that we can hear what you have to share with us. Thank you. By the way, how many minutes can I present? Um, you have about uh, 45 minutes to 50 minutes, and then we'll have question and answer time. OK. Thank that you. Give you enough time? It's good enough. OK, great. And we have more uh, Q&A section, right? Yeah. So thank you very much, Steve. Uh, thank you very much for Royal Asiatic Society. I'm not sure Royal Asiatic Society is a 
related to democracy promotion or anything like that? Maybe not, I guess. So uh, uh, today, anyway, I'm going to share about democratization and politics in Burma. The title is the background of crisis and, crisis and Infect, impact factors in Burma. So this is my uh, presentation title. And everybody know, you may aware that the military coup in February 1 in 2021 last year, it's already one year. So nobody was expected in Burma, the military were coup like that. The, uh, Burmese military, uh, the problem is they don't want to be subordinate under civilian government. That's one thing. And they are already in advance. They have a plan to coup. And after they coup, uh, the military appointed a new election commission. And then the election commission declared 2020 election, which was landslide victory by NLD, Aung San Suu Kyi party. But commission declared it was fraud. Then they, they ignore all the results. So that is uh, the main reason military in Burma claim because of election fraud, they have to coup. But many uh, domestic election observer and international observer, nobody agree about that election fraud. Nobody say it, it is uh, acceptable. There is no evidence, just claimed by military. So this was, uh, how the military coup in Burma. And in this month, the military extend their military rule for another six months. It is a kind of, they want to say, they are referring constitution. They have the right to extend another six months and they will again extend another six months. That is uh, the military want to claim they, are doing according to constitution. But in fact, uh, you know, in 2021, February, at the time of military coup, uh, there was uh, uh, the president women and Aung San Suu Kyi, the minister of foreign affairs. They are still uh, existing government, you know, they are, Government period is not finished yet until April 2021, 2021, it will finish. But before the end of the uh, term of government, the military coup, it's already against the constitution, you know. Whatever uh, decree, it should be declared by the president, not by the military chief, because the President is still power at the time. So the behavior of military is totally, they ignore the constitution and they ignore democracy. That's what the military done in last year. And the consequences, there was a lot of shooting the military shoot innocent people, they hang them, they behead that in those innocent people. Even some are very young, they are under age 10 or teen age, many of them. And also they rape women and they beat them and they hit them, their husband, like that. One of the case in Chin State, the military went to the, uh, the couple of house. The woman just gave birth the baby a month ago. 
the two military went there and they are accusing them and they raped the woman repeatedly in front of her husband and they beat them, her husband, and they hit them, her, her husband. And not just finished, they went back and they bring more soldiers. And those soldiers repeatedly raped the woman and beat them and hit them. So how the military are so cruel, you know, abusive in Burma. And many couple are break down and many family are break down because of the conflict in Burma. And also many Christian churches are burned down and min, many villages and any hometowns are burned down. And this is one of the most cruel regime in the world. It's crime against humanity. It's even a genocide, you know. Cool military coup leader are not really respect and they openly ignore constitution and the international law. So it is anarchy in Burma right now because military abusive, they attack people, they abuse and also the civilian has to defense, defensive and counter attack. So the military cannot control the country properly. Every city, every town, there was a fighting with uh, civilians and the military and they cannot operate the government properly. So it is an anarchy in Burma. So here is a hand villager, innocent people, they were beheaded by the military. Uh, in fact, they are in my hometown, you know, in Chin State. They are just villagers and they were on the way, the military saw them and they just accused them and they cut their head and they killed them. One of these, uh, you know, here, this, uh, young boys, just 10 years or something like that. And among them was one a journalist. So this is, uh, you know, unacceptable the way military action in Burma. And this is, uh, again, a Christian hometown. It's in Chin State, it's Tansang Township. It was burned down, the whole township was burned down. It's about uh, 900 buildings are already burned, you know. There are churches, many churches, they were burned down. This, without, you know, the people are no more in the town. At the beginning, they run away. But without any reason, deliberately, the military burned down. That is the behavior of military in Burma. It's still like, you know, a movie or something, a uh, picture, but it is really the, what's going on in Burma. And this another villages in Sagain region. They burn all the uh, rice crop of uh, the village and they destroy them. On the right side here, uh, villagers were burned down alive. It's a bowl. They were burned down. It's still like a movie, but it's really what's happening in Burma. And again, here everywhere, they are refugees. They are running for their life. Some people went to the forest and they refused there, and some people went to the border area, mostly Western Indian border and Eastern uh, Thailand border. Many refugees are running for their life. So this was done by military. What about the democratic government, NLD government? What 
Suji did mistake and what is NLD government is limbo. I want to a little bit point out that uh, the NLD government mistake is they could not prevent for minimum casualty, you know? They, if, if they are wise from the beginning, they could, they could done for minimum casualty. But now, casualties are so big and, you know, civilians are just for the conflict over thousand, thousand are already died, thousand are injury and 10 of thousand are, you know, uh, display, they run away for safety. So that could be prevented by NLD government to reduce tension and to prepare something not to happen this kind of casualty, but they could not done. And of course, NLD government was lack of strategy and poor political knowledge, those things that have been more a problem. Of course, Suji was mistake, something. I mean, uh, because during she was in power the last five years, she did not prepare. She did not prepare for upcoming military coup. They are careless. They did not prepare. And they know, everybody know the military behavior in Burma. Why they did not prepare and why they are careless. That's my argument. And eventually Suji was how arrested and she faced at the court for many trails, even, you know, if all the accusation were decided by the court, it could be hundreds of years she, she could face in jail. So Suji is out of, you know, political game. And in the absence of Suji, she is now in house arrest as how about her body and her people, political leader, member of parliament? They all are blind, you know? Why? Because Suji once, she said, when she was uh, selecting member of parliament, recruiting member of parliament, she said she doesn't need a intellectual person or member of parliament. She just one easily who can obey her in the party. So this is the consequence now, who uh, just obey uh, like a bunch of donkey. They are blind, everybody are blind now and they could not prevent problem, they could not make a good strategy, it made uh, more casualty and more problem. I, I'm agree Suji, once she is in power, under her eyes, under her control, she can lead, she can command a bunch of donkey, those member of parliament, they can follow her. But suddenly when she was outside, out of control, what happened? They all are blind. They all are blind. So many MP, NGO leaders, civilians, they are resisting the military, but they are blind. So that's something I want to point to Jimmy's state. She did not prepare, she careless, and she selected uh, not intellectual 
she selected not intellectual person for member of parliament. And again, those protest leader, NGO leader, they are also limbo. They don't have clear picture. They just provoking and shouting and people are chaos. Uh, one of the Obama problem is most politician and most uh, protest leader, most uh, NGO leader, they don't have clear ideology. They are mixed up with leftist ideology. They don't have clear political picture. Burmese problem is most majority are influenced by leftist ideology. They don't have clear image about ideology or political picture. And that is one problem in Burmese society and many social, uh, no social harmony in the country and the Burmese society cannot live harmony side by side with international society in many cases. So the thing is those protest leaders, those uh, NGO civil society leader, who are they? By whom and why to support them? That is big question for now. What is their background? I mean, what's their ideology? We don't know because of democracy, everybody are supporting and everybody are uh, encouraging. But now we have to have a question, who are they? What, by whom and why to support them? That we have to raise a question. So I want to explain next uh, brief background of Burmese regime uh, since independent because in order to understand Burma, you need to know Burmese uh, different factors from different regimes. So starting from UNU government and Neewin, Sanyu, Somong, Tanshui, Tenseng, Suji, and in 2020, to tell 70 years. During 70 years, about 50 years of uh, military control, military government, and 20, uh, about 50 years military government, and just 20 years for democracy government. So I want to explain briefly each regime. So UNU government was started from 1948 to 1962. He is civilian democratic government. He doesn't know about military. He never uh, involved in military and he is just civilian and he become a prime minister. And by the way, he is a, uh, even his democracy government, but he is a leftist ideology and strong Buddhist religion. And the, the thing is at the time, he's still able to manage democracy and he still keep mixed economy, even though he prefer leftist socialist uh, economy, but he still maintain a number of capitalist economy. So it's called mixed economy. During his government, Obama was good position. I mean, he can still maintain, even though he did not uh, open and engage, engage very well, a full engagement, but he kept maintain very well. It was one of very good status in Asia. The living standard are very good. Education are very good. Many Asian people come to study in Burma during his government. But unfortunately, you know, uh, 
he could not manage military and it was cool in 1962. So however, democracy, but left this ideology and uh, a strong Buddhist person. He is, his characteristic is like that. And next is a General Nguyen. He is one of the main problematic guy. He is virus for Burmese politics, Burmese political history. During, since UNU government, previous government, he was army chief. UNU was never get rid of him. He was able to manage, he able to dictate the chief of army position. That is one of weak point UNU failed to get rid of him. So eventually he become a coup, he coup, in 1962, and UNU was instead get out and even he has to run away from the country. UNU was run away from the country. And this guy has no political knowledge. He, he is just dictator. He just hungry for power. He, he really doesn't have any strong political knowledge with military background. He controlled very well army as dictator style. And, but the thing is in Burmese society, leftist ideology and Buddhist religion are strong factor, keep him dictator in Burma. So he was able to, uh, use leftist ideology of Buddhist religion for his uh, power. And at that time, Burmese was very bad situation. The political war turmoil and all the economy uh, collapse become all our uh, uh, Burmese uh, high living standard become down during his military rule. And then after 10 years, he changed military rule into the socialist system, socialist government. And he ruled for socialist uh, as a military turn into socialist uh, government president for about uh, eight year, nine year. Then he, he transfer his powers to is very loyal guy, another young guy, General Sanyu. You know, during his uh, Nguyen power, he get rid of all his subordinate, you know, who want to thump, who want to stand up him, he get rid of all. Most of them uh, remaining are uh, much younger than him. They all are, you know, uh, loyal to him, and he appoint one of them, San Yu, General San Yu. He become a next president of socialist government. This guy also uh, doesn't have much, not really have political knowledge. He also from military background, and they he use same like socialist uh, uh, economy, and he's leftist ideology and Buddhist to support the uh, dictator rule. And in fact, General San Yu had not much power because the socialist party, a single party, the ruling government party, which was uh, controlled by General Ne Win. He still control, he is chairman of the party, but, uh, General San Yu is just president. He could not change anything. It's mainly controlled from behind by General Ne Win. So during his government in 1988, there was nationwide uprising, you know, the whole country was uprising and his government was collapsed and 
uh, at the same time in 1990, something like the end of Cold War, you know. So they give up socialist government and the next government was the military government again. So this guy, General Soma, become a military government uh, leader in 1988 to 1992. He is just from military background. He doesn't, they, you know, military guy uh, really have no political knowledge. Uh, he is, they still based on leftist ideology and based on Buddhist religion. And they stop socialism and they want to change market economy, but it's not really market economy. It is just partial market economy. They did not done anything very well. And he's just a dictator. And he has also limited power because General Nguyen was still alive. And General Nguyen was a kind of a chief of a advisor. So he is pulling from behind and appointed uh, position in the government. So this guy was not really have power, not much. So there was some conflict with the General Nguyen in 1992, around 1992. Then he was kicked out by General Nguyen and he picked up another military guy for next government. His name is General Tan Shui. He ruled from 1993 to 2010, 2010. He is the second longest military uh, government in Burma after Nguyen. Nguyen ruled about 18 years or something like that. Uh, uh, no, Nguyen ruled more than 20 years, but he ruled about 17 or 18 years. So he's the second longest uh, government in Burma. And same thing, he has no, he is very stupid in, in, in fact, because during his government, uh, he, 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 was that all the natural resources of Burma, you know, he he's was that he give away, or he just uh, uh, sell them very cheap price to China, all these natural resources. He was so stupid. Even former General Ne Win and those things, they keep very precious nature resources in Burma. They never sell out with a very low price, the previous general. But this guy is so stupid. He said market economy and he sold out all nature resources very cheaply and gain nothing just for his own power benefit with the support of China, that's it. So one of among military general, he was so stupid and he ruled very long as well. And next is a, a military time, a democratic government because of a international climate change, international political climate change and you know, the environment changes and within Burmese economic uh, crisis, you know, the military decided that we should go back to democracy. So they start election in 2010 and the military town general was uh, elected for president and he ruled from 20, 2011 to 2015, uh, 
he he also doesn't have really political knowledge. He just a uh, uh, military background, and but they have desire, willingness to do a democracy in the country with just desire. Uh, uh, they got a lot of international support and international investment. During his time from 2011, Bamis uh, government had a lot, a lot of uh, benefit from international investment and, you know, is uh, significantly improving infrastructure and many things. So better than previous military rule. But uh, he is also still uh, uh, mixed ideology because he doesn't have clear democracy ideology and they are just military background and socialist background and they are based on Buddhist religion. So his economy is also a kind of mixed economy because they could not able to do complete capitalist market economy. So, however, he did better than previous military regime. And 2015, after then, it was a Suji government. Suji is a civilian democratic government. Uh, she doesn't have military background. That is her weak point. Anyway, personally, Suji is liberal, democratic, minded person, rightist. Only Suji is uh, not leftist in uh, Obama's uh, uh, leader in this modern political history. But the problem is, so even though Suji is a liberal democracy minded, but how NLD party member are uh, most of them are leftist ideology, mixed ideology. They don't have a clear liberal dem democracy, democracy ideology, except for Suji. Well, Suji was grown up in Western countries. She know very well and she educated very well. Her service good enough, but her party member are no clear ideology. That is problem. That's why I've been telling before. I'm, if she was still active, if she controlled the party and the political climate, she can bring along with her all this bunch of donkey, donkey MP and all this uh, leader to the a good direction, but suddenly she become out of a political state. Everything else blind. They lost direction. That's what I'm telling the political culture in Burma. So during Suji government, Burma was doing very good. She did very uh, development a lot of infrastructure, infrastructure. She built a lot of a road and a lot of construction for the country. Very much better than previous government. She did very well. I mean, people realized uh, during our government, it's very good. So you can distinguish different regime in Burma. I've been explaining briefly. All in all, compared to military regime, democratic regime in Burma are better than they did more development and they did more social welfare of the people. They did more higher living standards in Burmese modern history. So military did very bad. They are very bad in all in all. 
so you can distinguish different region. <laughs> and I want to explain ethnic lines and religious line, ideology factor, and different political factor. In Burma, there are uh, mainly 14 state and regions. So there are seven ethnic states with the uh, Sian color at the Western part, uh, Western Burma side two state, two ethnic state, and Eastern Burma, there are five ethnic state. This uh, uh, ethnic state, and in the middle, you know, uh, in the middle, light Sian color is uh, Burman region, seven Burman region. So it, it is different ideology based on ethnic line and religion. So if we see number one, Chin state is my home state, is in the Western part of Burma. Uh, the color with violet color, which means a Christian state. About 90% are Christian in Chin state. And Chin state is liberal democratic ideology. They are rightists. In Chin state never influenced by leftist ideology. And this is the only state uh, uh, over Welming Christian. The other three more state as Christian, but they are half and half, Buddhist half, Christian half. So to tell that there are about four Christian states. Only one Chin state is the overwhelming Christian state. And the next one is Karen state in the, you know. Eastern, Eastern part, this one, the small state. This also Christian state, it's about 60% of Christian. They are also uh, rightist, liberal democratic ideology, not informed by, by leftist ideology. And the other one on the top, not northern side, is Kachin state. Uh, there's also about 50% of Christian. And they are also more lean on liberal democracy, right? Is not a much uh, uh, left, leftist ideology. And the other one is uh, below one, I, I'm showing with the I'm um, describe it with the violet color, you know, spotted by the violet color. And there's three states in the eastern part of Burma. Grand State also have about 40% Christian. They also, we can say liberal democratic ideology and righteous. And yeah, only these four Christian states uh, lean on rightist liberal democracy. I mean, rightist mean not conservative in the America or UK, you know, I mean, they are demo liberal democratic ideology, not communist or socialist leftist. So only this four state, uh, rightist liberal democracy ideology. And the other, Three ethnic states in western part of Burma. This is a Arakan state, Rakhine state. They are um, overwhelmingly Buddhist religion, and their ideology is mixed ideology, both uh, democracy and uh, leftist ideology. Because they, are, uh, you, they used to be a communist fighter something like that in the state. So communists are uh, a kind of influence there. 
And another one is Shan State in Eastern border here. One of big state, Shan State. That's also about uh, overwhelmingly uh, Buddhist, 80%. And their ideology also mix because communists are in and out and some kind of uh, they are influenced. So not pure uh, righteous liberal democracy. And Moon State also overwhelmingly Buddhist 80%. And they are also mixed ideology. So only four state in ethnic state uh, uh, it is secure for righteous liberal democracy. The, even among seven and eight state, the other three are uh, 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 still mixed ideology and lean to the leftist ideology. And let's see the Burman region, the mainland Burman region in the middle line. There are seven Burman regions. They all are overwhelmingly Buddhist regions, over 80%, 90, some are 85, like that. And they all are influenced by leftist ideology, either communist, but mostly socialist, I think. Because in Burma, we can see the correlated between religion and ideology. Usually Buddhist and left, this ideology are correlated. And Christian are more about lean to the liberal democracy. In that way, you can distinguish where is secure for liberal democracy, in, in which ethnic background and which ethnic state you can distinguish in, in order to understand Burmese political culture and political society, Burmese society. So I'm just describing these different ethnics and different factor of ideology, religion, politics. So this, I just finished about Burmese factor and I want to emphasize more about how Burma and Korea relation. South Korea, North Korea, both of them established embassy in Burma since 1975. However, Burmese are more, you know, lean to the leftist ideology. So they went visited to North Korea in 1970, 1977, but he did not visit to South Korea. So that's why North Korea know they are same leftist ideology and they took advantage uh, as a, a leftist ideology country. And from South Korea side, during Chanduhan president, he visited to Burma in 1983. It was accident of both bombing in Burma. He was a few minutes late. Otherwise he could be, you know, assassinated. That relationship between Burma and Korea, and you can see after bombing at the Aung Metro Mausoleum in Burma, you can see people, many VIP people die. I think there was a recently Moon Jae-in president visited the same play, but in 1983, it was the one's bomb. How, let's see, this uh, bombing is, is very important. It was confrontation between rightist and leftist ideology, you can say, because South Korea is a rightist democratic 
ideology, and North Korea is a leftist ideology. So in the bombing, about 21 people die on spot, including four Burmese official, four South Korea cabinet member, and two Korean president advisor, and the other are reporter. And later, three more Burmese soldiers were killed by North Korea uh, agent. He suicide, he blast the bomb including he was died. And later two North Korean agents were arrested and one was hanged and the other one was life sentence. Uh, totally, we can say about 25 people died in the incident of the bomb in Rangoon. And at the times, Seoul government asked Rangoon to support the case to bring in the United Nations General Assembly, but Burmese government refused. They did not cooperate with South Korea. They investigate by their own in Burma because uh, they want to prevent North Korea for any any you know UN action because as I told you, Burmese socialist government is more lean to the leftist ideology. Of course, how North Korea can easily uh, suicide, assassinate, bomb? It's not possible without cooperation with Burmese intelligence. I never heard about, you know, this kind of detailed information uh, ex uh, explained by Korean or uh, Korean news. They did not much tell about that. So I want to explain more detail because Burmese government is leftist ideology. Even in Burmese military, some in Intelligence are so extreme. They want to go like Soviet style socialist, socialist system. And they have uh, cooperate with Soviet intelligence. Even in 1977, Burmese Politic, Politic Bureau member, they are much pro Moscow leaning like that. You know, that time, you know, socialist ideology was so strong. So this is how they cooperated with North Korea. And they, there are many uh, communists are involved, maybe communist party or communist supporter and bomb is intelligent because as I told you, Burmese government, Burmese army, Burmese intelligence, they personally, many of them are, are leftist ideology. You know? They are influenced by leftist ideology. If uh, South Korea visited to my home state, Chin state, it was rightist ideology. It won't happen because people are not influenced by uh, socialists ideology, leftist ideology. But it was in the Burman region. It can easily happen. They could not protect South Korea delicate because they are leftist ideology. And at the time South Korea was seriously attacked by, you know, leftist country, leftist ideology. Before bomb in Rangoon, Rangoon was bombed in October 1980, uh, September, uh, October 1983. Just one month ago in September, Soviet 
Union, they disrupted South Korean airline. You can imagine how was, uh, you know, terrible. Just one month ago, South Korea airline was disrupted by Soviet leftist ideology. And again, in Rangoon bomb in October, South Korea was attacked by leftist ideology. It was so sad, you know, it was helpless. Even bomb were supposed to protect South Korea delegate, but bomb miss government themselves are leftist ideology. They could not protect South Korea and they cooperate with North Korea instead. It was so sad for South Korea, but I don't know how many South Korea people uh, understand or know about those decay information. The uh, media never, uh, it was never come out such kind of information in South Korean media, I guess. So the thing is, South Korea should know the leftist Burmese government are untrustworthy. Why? South Korea not aware. Burmese leftist government are untrustworthy. So they should know who the Burmese, who are they, by whom and why to support them relationship with them. So who should know? So this kind of my information, many Korean, it was not come out in Korean media. I feel Korean people should have a chance to know. Korean people should know whom they are dealing now, what source and what information. Now South Korea are dealing with Burmese democratization and they spot many things. But the question is whom they are dealing with them? Who are they? How, by whom and for whom they are uh, supporting? That is a question. They have to see there was clear evidence case the bomb in Rangoon. South Korea was attacked by leftist ideology. They have to learn the lesson. So whom they are dealing with them and by whom and for whom now they are supporting. South Korea has to know that. That's uh, I want, I let them know South Korean people. So in if you if in conclusion in my presentation, if you see overall, I realized we need to organize a genuine and strong democratization across Asia because Asia are very vulnerable for breakdown of democracy is vulnerable because surrounded by a lot of leftist ideology. It is very vulnerable to prevent leftist ideology. And Asia people are, uh, you know, I am I study politics, I know politics, I can explain that. But ordinary people, many Asian people, they don't know at all. They mix up with leftist ideology and democracy, uh, you know, liberal democracy. Those ideology, they don't know, they are mixed up. So we need to prevent leftist ideology to secure our liberal democracy in Asia, because Western country has not a problem at all. They are already mature. Their democracy is mature enough but Asia is very vulnerable. That's why I mean, we need to do something for genuine and strong democratization in Asia. You can see in the regional democratization and solidarity 
nowadays very vulnerable. Example, democracy is break down in Thailand, military coup before Obama and now Obama military coup like that. Democracy uh, break down easily and very vulnerable because the, the Asian society, uh, there are many mis misunderstanding and diversity of interests among parties and the absence of collective organization for you know, liberal democratization. We cannot say just democracy slogan is not enough. We need to do deeply and we need to screen the background of each society, whether it belong to leftist ideology or it belong to uh, rightist ideology. We have to screen each society. That is big challenge in Asia. So conclusion, I want to call to create Asia Society for Democracy, for liberal democracy. Indeed, this my proposal, Asia Society for Democracy is for our safety, you know, to, to, to have a grantee for democracy. So in this Asia Society for Democracy, we, can, we should select carefully our members who are genuine and strong determination for democracy like that. That is my idea. That's why I was asking Steve at the beginning, RAS may be a little bit different. What now I'm calling is Asia Society for Democracy. It's for liberal democracy. I mean, rightist ideology. So that we need for our safety for guarantee of democracy. We have to fight for that. Thank you for presentation and for your listening. Thank you. John, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate the details. And uh, I, I think all of us may have a better handle on what Burma is about than we did at the beginning. Uh, I would say about uh, Jun Du Huan, though, uh, many people were disappointed that he didn't get killed. Uh, many Koreans were disappointed that he wasn't killed in that bombing, but uh, that's you another story. Chan Du Han? Yes, Chan Du Han. Yeah. He was a brutal military dictator. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, <laughs> the thing is, I'm not uh, appreciating military dictator Chan Du Han. I, I, I but, understand, yeah. But yeah. the thing is, uh, South Korea military dictator are uh, never left this ideology. That's one thing, you know. That, that is you, true. That's different from Burmese military. <laughs> yes. Burmese military is left this ideology. Yeah, yeah. South Korea military is not left this ah, ideology. That, right. that is the uh, different point, yeah, yes. Yeah, it was different, but uh, anyway, I, uh, Burma is, has long been on my bucket list of places to visit. Uh, about 25 years ago, our RAS Korea had a planned a trip there. Um, and we had a great debate in our council about whether we should support a trip to Burma, which at the time was a military dictatorship, because our tourist dollars would go to the military dictatorship pockets. And uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I can't remember whether we did that trip or not. I think we may have, but uh, I remember the debate that we had in the council uh, about whether or not that's the kind of a place we should be sponsoring an overseas trip. Uh, well, uh, questions, uh, anybody, everybody? Unmute and just jump right in. Sam, go ahead. Yep. Yes, uh, John, thank you very much um, for speaking with us. And um, I, I learned a great deal from your presentation. I, on a, on a private trip many, many years ago, I, I had the pleasure of visiting Burma and it, it, was, it is an extraordinary place. 
and I feel so much for that the people are suffering right now. Um, but I, you mentioned many, many times about the, the Buddhist uh, ideology and influence. And I was curious right now um, what the Buddhist leadership is doing and what their position is. Are they, in, in your understanding, are they more favorable to the, to the military government or are they on, on the standing with the people or where, where would you put the, the Buddhist leadership and what's going on right now? Yes. The, the clergy and the leadership. and uh, Yes, definitely. Uh, the Buddhist currently uh, very famous Buddhist and uh, top leader of Buddhist and most of Buddhist monks, they are definitely cooperating with military dictator. Mm. And only uh, very minor monks and something uh, protest, but over all in all, and famous and top monks leader are uh, under complete military control and they work for military. Because uh, the Hmong perspective of liberal democracy is not that big deal because Obama was so influenced by leftist ideology together with Buddhist religion. They used to live together Buddhist religion and leftist ideology. So for them, it's not much different. They same they feel living under military is uh, even they feel better than uh, previous democracy because Suji is more liberal democracy, you know, mm -hmm. and she did not aware much re re uh, religion and she did not much given prestigious position for Buddhist religion. She just uh, ordinary. She is Buddhist, but uh, uh, she did not make any uh, prestigious for Buddhists. So this Buddhist, uh, you know, extreme Buddhists are more preferred to the military, definitely. Yeah. I see. I see. Thank you. But how big is Burma's military? What, what numbers would we be looking at as far as how many are in the military? Uh, the strength of Burmese military. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's about uh, you know the uh, active military maybe four hundred thousand, mm. and maybe reserve is one hundred thousand to tell five hundred military personnel, mm. and you know Burmese military according to military power global power rank. They are about 39 or 40, you know, pretty much high. Yeah. So in, in relation to the population, they're pretty high numbers. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, not with the population, overall, the global power ranking. You know? Okay. Oh, okay. The global uh, power. Okay. Global power ranking about 39 is pretty much uh, high because okay. there are many countries who doesn't have 100 thousand uh, military personnel. So okay. Burma have much, uh, 500 military personnel and they have a strong air force and Navy, you know, they have a lot of uh, attack, uh, you know, the ship. And if now they have two submarine. Mm. So the military for not bad, but the problem is the bomb is, uh, you know, uh, the military are not professional in terms of uh, the politics. They want to mess up Bami's politics and they want to play like Buddhist. They want to be prestigious position in the country. You know, that is so bad in Bami's political culture. They just not doing their duty as a soldier and to be subordinate to the civilian government, but they don't want, they want to be, you know, uh, prestigious position and 
they want to be upper hand. That was the conflict between the military and civilian government. They want to be upper hand. If they don't follow their request by civilian government, they uh, not hesitate to coup. That's yeah. what happening. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom, welcome. Go ahead, unmute and ask away. No, okay, unmute. Yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, uh, in February 2015, the RES did have a... Uh, oh, unmute your mic. Uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me try again. Yeah. Uh, in February 2015, the RES KB did have a very successful tour of Myanmar, and we learned a great deal, including the widespread aspirations of the common uh, Myanmar person uh, for democracy and how hard everyone was trying in their individual ways to prove to the world that they were capable of becoming a modern liberal democratic uh, society. Uh, I've been closely following the country since then. And one of the interesting uh, developments uh, during the past 12 months among the younger people, particularly those of the majority of the Barmar population, is they've come to a reckoning that they were in error in accepting the military's ongoing civil wars in the periphery countries, uh, assuming, well, that's ethnic uh, state or group problems. They have since recognized that they are, in fact, all Myanmar citizens, and they, for the first time, actually develop a sense of solidarity about being Myanmar and not simply being of the privileged Myanmar uh, majority. So my question is, yep. with all the negative developments of the past 12 months, uh, does our speakers see any positive development that the young people using social media and a new uh, discovery that they need to get over the ethnic and religious differences in facing a common enemy. Does he see any development uh, where there could be a practical liberal democratic ideology forming as a basis of an ongoing opposition? Yes. Uh... You know, they realize it is, you know, even it is very late. They realize things very late. I should say like that because uh, 70 years already, you know, after mm -hmm. independence, during 70 years, we don't have such kind of understanding by the whole population in Burma. This time, most, the whole population, mostly Burma, the mainland Burma, they realize it's not about ethnic issue. We cannot just pinpoint ethnic, but it is something more. It is a military problem. They realize just now. They did not realize mm -hmm. before. It was too late for me. We, yeah. we could we could been done before, and we should change the country. So they realized now. But uh, the level of uh, political maturity is still low in Burma. People are poor. Their intellectual knowledge are very low, and you know, they there are many a mix up ideology leftist ideology and, you know, liberal ideology, they are still mixed up. But this time, they rely on uh, mainly Suji, you know. The good thing is, whatever Suji say, they are willing to follow. That is good thing. Mm -hmm. So Suji can give direction to the liberal democracy. Unfortunately, she was arrested and she was out of state. That is bad thing. So it is very, you know, 
uncertainty for Burmese future. Because as I told you, most member of parliament and most protest leader, no clear political picture, they just provoking. Most are, they are supporting Suji. In that way, they are, they are doing not because of they are clearly digest or understand right. about liberal democracy. That is, that is the thing where I'm worried. But we have to clear understanding and digest the political image and nation building. Even without Suji, we can still uh, go ahead to the liberal democracy direction. But the thing, yep. uh, Burmese population lag is uh, we are not digest in most population. That is the problem. I'm worried. I met in Thailand Utad's uh, son, whom I'm sure you know, who's been a very, it's much like your political scientist. And yeah. we both agree that Suchi is an old woman. And there was a very strong reverse brain drain back into Myanmar by very bright and talented uh, Myanmar professionals as they look forward to developing the country, which of course was thwarted 12 months ago. But among these young people, young being averaging age around 40, 45 years old, yeah. are there not any charismatic people? The only other person I know is Utan's uh, son and maybe yourself, let's say. But do you see any hope if any new charismatic person to fill Su Chi's face, her shoes, because who knows how long she will live? That is a big challenge, uh, as you said. You know, even in my presentation, I show one of the protest leader. There are three guys. They are from 88 generation. 88 protest leader, mm -hmm. they, they, they are strongly, uh, you know, sh they are slogan for democracy. You, on the left side, I show the arrow, the, uh, the, his name is Moheng, the short guy. Uh, now he is, you know, he is uh, 88 leader, but now he is working with the military. I see on the, uh, military elevation. He is uh, strongly uh, supporting military and working with military against to the liberal democracy. So this kind of you know protest leader, ATA leader, very famous leader. I see clearly they are not digesting and they are just doing for some level you know, some limited they are doing, not because of they are just clear image, clear, they digest political knowledge, not because of that. So some, they are doing for some limit, limitation, not absolutely uh, uh, for uh, digesters. So that is a very disappointment that was happening, not just protest leader, among protest leader, also among, you know, member of parliament. I told a lot of uh, donkey, donkey and BN protest leader is exists in Burma, that's big problem. So it will be very uh, uh, uncertainty for the future with this, donkey, bunch of donkey in the policy. That, that is big challenge. It's quite worrisome, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is there anyone else with a question? Uh, yes, I have a question if I can. Oh, please go ahead, David. Yeah. Um, my room's a bit of a mess, so please forgive everything uh, behind me. Um, Thank you for the presentation, John. You might find my question stupid or have no information, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I left it till the end. Recently, some PhD students from the United States contacted me 
and they were doing research into young people in Burma who are K-pop fans and they're using K-pop as a medium to get their messages for democracy out. So, for example, they're becoming uh, fa they're contacting other K-pop fans in Germany, in Western Europe, in North America, Telegram, TikTok. And in those K-pop fan groups, then they're able to uh, express their their hopes for democracy, their worries about their country and use that to sort of get round any suppression. Do you have any information? Is that true? Do you know anything about that? Um, I know it's a strange question, but I don't meet many people from Burma, so I thought I would ask. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the K-pop group, but I know there are many artists and, you know, the actor, actress who are strongly advocate and participate for democratization in Burma. Mm. Uh, you know, the main thing is what we need in Burma. First thing is uh, the one who digests politics and who know very well about nation building. The first thing that we need. You know, those supporters like K-pop or those uh, protest leader, whatever, uh, they are second level supporter. They, they are level is just supporter. They are not architect, you know. What we have problem, we have to have a clear architect who know very well what is liberal democracy and how to be nation building. Don't mix up with leftist ideology and those things, you know. Because majority of Burmese are still mixed up with leftist ideology, even Many people are, you know, bolstering about democracy, but inside the problem is influenced by leftist ideology. That's what my point, you know. Many protest leaders, even they are, are not clear. John, are, are you that architect? Are you that person? I don't have chance to play on the state, political state in Burma. I'm just a researcher and I, I clear, I know well about Burma. I'm confident. I grow up in Burma. I grow up during socialist government. And I know all the factor, impact factor. If I have chance, I can be, I can, I have confidence and I can do that. I, uh, I'm, I'm very confident, to them, but I don't have chance. You know, we need some state. <laughs> to play, to act this, uh, this political game. Yeah. Thank you for everything tonight, John. It was great listening to you. Uh, Tom, go ahead. Unmute, oh, yeah. Tom. <laughs> uh, following up on the last point, uh, one thought a uh, number of us in the Quaker community have been looking at is trying to find an honest uh, peace, uh, peacemaker. That is to say, someone who would be acceptable to all key parties. Uh, most likely the person or persons may not actually even be Myanmar, but outside uh, nationalities such as uh, uh, prior a head of state from a country such as even South Korea or someone uh, who might have had some international organization res uh, responsibility like the International Red Cross. But the idea is find someone who's willing to put the past behind him or them and be able to work uh, with both are multiple sides towards a uh, positive, constructive uh, future. The problem with uh, we looking at Myanmar people at this moment is everyone has a very solid reason or agenda to disagree with each other. And they probably needs to find uh, someone who can uh, 
go and talk to each party with uh, respect to both. I mean, a good example is what happened in North Ireland when uh, Clinton was willing to bring Jerry Adams into the White House, who was at that time recognized as an international terrorist. Put that aside and give uh, respect and accordance to both sides and then use that as a platform to move forward because both sides are uh, deathly afraid of each other uh, uh, winning the conflict. So okay. have you, could you nominate anyone to possibly fulfill that role, uh, Dr. Tong? To engage with the regime in Burma and with all stakeholder. As well as yeah, all stakeholders on a neutral third party basis. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, no individual can directly do that. But it is possible indirectly leadership is indirectly is possible because the one who architecture know uh, the internal factor very much, you know, they should know because Bami's uh, problem is mostly not from external, it's from internal factor most of the that that create Burmese crisis, you know. So we need to know right. the internal factor very well. And one of international society is very important. They can play a big role indirectly. They can, you know, they can make a blue blueprint together with uh, right. Burmese uh, uh, expert. They can make. They can lay down the foundation. That, right. That's very much uh, necessary from international society. If we can lay down the foundation, we can build the nation according to the foundation. Completely, it is possible. Now we don't have blueprint, and we nobody yet lay down the military government. Mm -hmm. They did not lay down the foundation and Suji government did not, they may have a plan, but they did not yet. So nobody laid down. So if we lay down the foundation, we make the blueprint together with international society. That mm -hmm. is uh, the starting point. That is very good point. Of course, uh, in America, I should say, someone maybe who know very well uh, who first thing is who want to in who are interested to build nation in Burma someone can do that and who has uh, many background with uh, US politics and uh, who can easily you know uh, bring US uh, leadership and the Congress and the government, uh, if someone who can bring easily, that, that someone like that person can do that. And first thing is the important thing is he should be interested to build the nation, you know, in Burma. Right. Oh, that can be possible. I don't know who will be in America. Uh, I don't know. Obama can do. I, I'm not sure. He is more. Well, maybe. Well, it could be a Korean like Ban Ki Moon. That name has been circulated. I don't know if he's been approached because it would be a, uh, another country, not a big country, but a neutral country, or perhaps someone from Japan. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a superpower. For. For my personally, I prefer somebody who are more strategic uh, skill, strategically skill, yeah. like that. Even you know, yeah. milita military intelligence or something. Who are I see. Uh, I mean, good point. The thing is, Ban Ki Mo is uh, even he has uh, Korean 
people did not uh, uh, allow him to play anything in domestic politics. So how right. he can bring Korean, you know, support in order to do something in Burma? Because uh, we just go and doing something. It's not like that. Like that. He, he should be able to con convince and he should be able to bring the uh, country, you know, political uh, system, you know, because only then he has a power. Otherwise, he, without power, he cannot do anything, you know. He needs some power. Right. Well, you, power, good points. power background from America or either power background from something else. I think uh, the more effective is uh, we can do from America background, you know, because South Korea has not much power to do. Right. The problem with America is it create a reaction with China, for example. But the purpose is really to create a neutral platform. Obviously, it's up for the Myanmar people to find their own solution. But the third party role is simply to create a neutral space where people can uh, talk to each other uh, in a guise of mutual uh, acceptance, maybe not respect, but acceptance. And then it's up to the Myanmar people to find their own solution. This is I'm one thought. I'm worried is about the military side, you know. The military will not mm -hmm. understand what South Koreans said or what Japanese said. Uh, the military uh, uh, may, uh, uh, they can more attention on the America because either I diplomacy see. or by military power, American has a capacity to do that is they have mm -hmm. in their mind. And instead of, I, instead of South Korea or Japan or those things, uh, Burmese military can listen more in Asia because the regional, they concern more than anything else, either South Korea or right. Japan. That is a military side. So when we see all side, that's why uh, I mean something who are strategic and uh, powerful background that can practically they can do more. And that is uh, my, that's my point. That's why I want to call for the Asia society democracy. That mean this should be included by all this uh, liberal society background, you know, with this kind of group background and we will, <laughs> we can be make different layer the government level layer and just ordinary layer, we can be made differently. So in this kind of engagement, we can bring all liberal society, government level, top level. And that group can engage with Burma and we can lay down the foundation. That, that is a, a possible way because not individual, only one man engagement is this will not walk in Burma. Well, on that note, well, ASEAN have... has no respect. In... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I All need right. to bring us to a close. I I'm, I apologize. We sorry about that. Time. Uh, very very interesting discussion. Uh, John, thank you again for being with us tonight. Um, folks, thank you for joining us. We we appreciate your attention and uh, for being here.